In the year 356 BC, in the heart of Macedonia, a child was born who would go on to become one of the greatest military tacticians and conquerors in history. His name was Alexander, born to King Philip II and Queen Olympias. Young Alexander was raised amidst the splendor of Macedonia's royal court. His education, guided by the philosopher Aristotle, laid the intellectual foundation for his future conquests. Even in his formative years, Alexander displayed an exceptional aptitude for military strategy and leadership. His first successes came as he quelled rebellions in Greece, demonstrating his remarkable courage and tactical brilliance. Yet, beneath this veneer of success, Alexander's unquenchable ambition and ruthless determination began to take shape. He was known for pushing his soldiers to the limits and his fierce temper that could erupt with devastating consequences. As Alexander matured, he set his sights on an audacious goal, the conquest of the sprawling Achaemenid Empire, ruled by King Darius III. We are going to be focusing in three battles that shook the world and changed the geopolitics forever. The Battle of Granicus in 334 BC marked the first of Alexander's triumphs, showcasing his military genius as he led his army to victory against Persian and some allied mercenary Greek forces led by the satrap Arcites and Memnon of Rhodes. The Persian forces were estimated at around 20,000, while the Macedonians around 18,000. The Granicus River presented a significant obstacle for both armies. The Persians took up a defensive position on the opposite bank, expecting Alexander to attempt a river crossing. Alexander devised a bold and aggressive strategy. He led his cavalry, along with some infantry, in a daring frontal assault across the river. This surprise attack caught the Persian forces off guard. Fierce melee issued, but Alexander's elite companion cavalry played a crucial role in breaking the Persian lines and ultimately granting him the victory. The Battle of Issus in 333 BC took place south of the ancient town Issus, which is close to the present-day Turkish town of Iskenderun, showcased Alexander's military genius. Outnumbered by almost two to one, facing King Darius III and the most elite units the Persian war machine could master. Alexander employed a brilliant strategy, focusing on breaking through the Persian left flank where Darius was stationed. He led a charge with his companion cavalry, personally targeting Darius. The Macedonian companion cavalry commanded by Alexander proved to be decisive in the battle. Their charge shattered the Persian left wing and threatened to capture or kill Darius. The king of kings fled the field. Alexander led his outnumbered army to a stunning victory, capturing the Persian royal family and all of its treasures, but he didn't succeed in becoming the sole king of Asia. The Battle of Gaugamela in 331 BC was one of the defining moments of his Persian campaign, where Alexander's strategic brilliance secured a resounding victory over Darius III. Alexander faced an army that modern schoolers estimated around 100,000 outnumbering him, three to one. Alexander's strategy was to draw Darius into a direct confrontation, where his superior Macedonian infantry and cavalry could excel. He also aimed to neutralize the Persian chariots and elephants. The battle began with Persian chariots charging the Macedonian lines. However, Alexander's troops managed to break their formation. The elephants were also rendered ineffective, causing panic among the Persian ranks. Alexander personally led a cavalry charge into the gap created by the failure of the Persian chariots. His elite companion cavalry spearheaded the attack, and they directly targeted Darius. Once again, Darius III fled the battlefield to avoid capture or harm, leaving his army without leadership. This demoralized the Persian forces. The Battle of Gaugamela marked the effective end of Persian resistance against Alexander's conquest. He continued to pursue Darius, eventually leading to Darius's assassination by his own men. But behind the facade of triumph, Alexander's darker side emerged. He became increasingly paranoid, seeing plots and conspiracies everywhere, leading to the execution of trusted generals and friends. His pursuit of Darius and the Persian Empire knew no bounds. His ruthless streak became more pronounced, culminating in acts of cruelty that left a lasting mark on history. The burning of Persepolis in 330 BC remains a stark reminder of his ruthlessness as he sought to cement his legacy as a conqueror of unparalleled proportions. After the assassination of Darius, Alexander sought to secure the areas on the boundaries of the vast Persian Empire that led him into uncharted territories, the rugged landscapes of Sogdiana and India. The campaign began with the Siege of Syropolis, the largest and most formidable city in Sogdiana. It was a protracted siege that lasted several months. The city eventually fell to Alexander's forces. Despite the capture of Syropolis, other Sogdian cities and fortresses continued to resist. The Sogdians employed guerrilla tactics, making it challenging for Alexander to fully subdue the region. One of the notable Sogdian leaders who led the resistance was Spitamenus, who organized and inspired Sogdian forces against the Macedonians. 
Spidemis, along with other local leaders, kept the resistance alive. Alexander employed a combination of military force and diplomacy to pacify the region. He married Roxana, the daughter of a local Sogdian noble, in an attempt to gain local support and legitimacy. Alexander eventually managed to capture Spitamenes in 327 BC, which dealt a significant blow to the Sogdian resistance. Spitamenes was betrayed by his own men and surrendered to Alexander. The Sogdian campaign demonstrated Alexander's ability to adapt his tactics to various challenges and terrain. It also showcased his determination to continue expanding his empire into previously unconquered territories. Yet, it was during these campaigns that his darker side became increasingly evident. His erratic behavior alienated his closest companions, culminating in a mutiny at the Hyphasis River. Despite internal conflicts, Alexander continued chasing his dreams and pressed on into India, where he faced fierce resistance from regional kings. The Battle of the Hydaspes River in 326 BC highlighted his tactical brilliance but also his ruthlessness in dealing with defeated foes. Alexander's forces faced the challenge of crossing the heavily defended Hydaspes River to engage King Porus' army on the other side. Alexander devised a brilliant plan, using a night crossing downstream to surprise the Indian forces. The battle was fought on the opposite bank of the Hydaspes. Alexander's forces were formed in their traditional phalanx formation, while King Porus positioned his infantry and elephants to counter the Macedonians. King Porus's elephants charged the Macedonian lines and initially caused some panic among the Macedonian infantry. However, Alexander's troops adapted quickly, creating gaps in their formation to allow the elephants to pass harmlessly through. The decisive moment came when Alexander led a cavalry charge against the weakened center of King Porus's army. The companion cavalry's attack broke the Indian lines, and the Macedonians gained the upper hand. Despite fighting valiantly, King Porus was eventually captured by Alexander's forces. Alexander was impressed by King Porus's bravery and treated him with respect. He allowed Porus to remain as the ruler of his kingdom, albeit as a vassal of Alexander. After defeating Porus, Alexander continued his march eastward through the Punjab region, consolidating his control over local territories. Alexander's troops began to show signs of fatigue and rebellion. They had been campaigning for years and were weary of the continuous battles and distant campaigns. At the Bees River, Alexander's troops refused to advance further east, and he reluctantly agreed to turn back. By the time Alexander reached the Indus River, his empire spanned three continents, a testament to his extraordinary ambition and military genius. In his last year, however, the shadows grew darker. His belief in his divine status intensified, causing rifts with his Greek and Macedonian comrades. In the last year of his life, he started experiencing health issues. Some historians speculate that he suffered from various ailments, including fever, abdominal pain, and weakness. The exact nature of his illness remains a subject of debate. Alexander's excessive drinking likely took a toll on his physical health. It may have contributed to some of the health problems he experienced in the later years of his life. In June 323 BC, at the age of 32, Alexander succumbed to a fever in Babylon. His death marked the end of an era. The legacy of his conquests would shape the world for centuries to come. His vast empire was divided among his generals. A crisis ensued, and a war broke out between them known as the Diadochi Wars. Alexander the Great, an enigmatic figure of immense ambition and unparalleled military brilliance, left behind a legacy of both glory and darkness. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe please, to help the channel. See you on the next one.